and welcome back to the lecture series of learning theory of automata and formal languages. My name is Binayak Parashar. I am working as an assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering at Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghaziabad. So, this is unit number 1 and we are learning about the basics of finite automata or automata. Okay. Till now, we have tried to grasp uh, almost all the basic uh, topics related to automata theory where we have understood the basic preliminary uh, topics like uh, alphabets, strings, languages. Okay. Then we have understood what is the meaning of automata and finite automata. We have understood the categories of finite automata which is divided into two categories, finite automata with output, without output. If we talk about finite automata with output, it comprises of Mealy and Murray machines. If we talk about finite automata without output, we comprises of DFA, NFA and FA with epsilon transition. So, these all topics that I have mentioned has been covered till now and this is your lecture number 10 and we will try to cover up here some of the properties related to finite automata and these properties I will try to extend in the upcoming video lecture also where we will look into the concept known as regular language and there also we will look into the same concept that is the properties. But we will try to elaborate maximum points in this video and some points in the particular last video. Okay. And apart from that, we will look into one more topic that is known as your equivalence of DFAs. Means if we look into two finite automata, how do we justify that these two finite automata are equivalent to each other? So, overall, I will try to sum up in this video some of the important points which we have covered till now and so that you can get a brief review of what we have done till now. Okay. So, let us get back to this topic and let us start off with the first slide. So, before starting with the topic as I have already mentioned that the topic covers up with the closure properties of finite automata as well as some extended decision properties of finite automata as well. But what these closure properties are all about? What is the meaning of closure properties? Okay. Actually, if we try to find out some one particular concept say suppose I am talking a Z. I am talking a Z. This Z is nothing but what? integers or set of integers we are having. Okay. It may be having a positive values, it may be having a negative values. Okay. Now, suppose if I take 5 and I take minus 6. So, suppose these two integer values that I have taken, if suppose I use a operation say suppose add or addition operation, then whatever result you are getting or whatever result you will be getting will fall under where? We will fall under set of integers only. That means, we can say that these two positive and negative set of integer numbers are closed under addition. Okay? That means, we are trying to find out some similarities between two numbers or some, I am talking about numbers as of now, talking about two numbers and if a operation is being performed over these two numbers, whether we are getting the same set of result or not. If yes, then we can say that these two positive num these two numbers are closed under this particular operation. Okay? That is the meaning of closure property. Okay? Now, if we go with this particular concept and try to relate with the finite automata concept or try to relate with the regular language concept, okay, then let us check that what properties it includes. Okay? So, let me erase the part that I have used as of now and let us check how many properties we can come across with the concept of closure. So, first one is your clean closure, second one is your positive closure, third one is your complement, fourth one is your concatenation, fifth one is his union, sixth intersection, seventh is set difference, eighth is homomorphism, ninth is inverse homomorphism. Okay. So, as I have already mentioned to you that few of the properties we will be properly discussing in this video and when we will be discussing about the regular language concept, there also some closure properties and finite and uh, decision properties are there. There also we will try to look few of the points. This particularly these three points, these three properties we will look into that particular chapter. Okay? Now, in this video, we will try to look or concentrate on these six properties and try to explain and try to understand how to like you can say solve or how to prove that whether this particular topic is closed under uh, uh, the finite automata or not. Okay? 
So, let me check with the first one that is your um, okay. before that uh, already I have discussed with you all what is the meaning of closure properties, but here also we have included there the definition. So, closure properties on regular languages Okay, again and again I am telling you regular languages take me uh, let me pause for a moment and let me give you a hierarchy of it so that you will be able to understand now because now I am pretty much sure that if you have understood till here then you will be able to relate what and all topics we are doing. See there is a proper hierarchy for this okay. what is the hierarchy first comes finite automata thereafter comes push down automata. So, I am just writing in a short form okay, and I am pronouncing you can note it down if you want. Then next comes linear bounded automata and finally, it comes Turing machine. Okay. So, in the next video we will be coming across with the concept of regular expression that time we will be discussing about uh, acceptor generator and uh, representator topic. So, that time you will be able to know these all are machines these all are machines okay and what does machines do machines generally accept okay it will not generate it will accept the particular set of strings clear on the contrary for every machine there are two things okay for every machine there are two things what are these two things one is the language and one is the grammar through which these strings will be generated okay for every machine the grammar part i am writing okay for finite automata it is said to be regular grammar which you will be looking into unit number 3 okay pda context free grammar for linear bounded automata it is context sensitive grammar and for Turing machine it is said to be unrestricted grammar. So, I am just pronouncing you try to note it down regular grammar context free grammar context sensitive grammar unrestricted grammar and these are the grammars for associated with each individual machines which are responsible for generating strings clear. Next comes for all these machines there are set of languages which is said to be regular language regular grammar context free language context free grammar then context sensitive language context sensitive grammar and for unrestricted grammar we are having two languages one is recursively enumerable language or recurs and recursive language. So, this is the overall hierarchy where I am going from low to high. Okay. If we look into the expressive power, Turing machine is having the highest power compared to finite automata. Why? It depends on the language with which these machines are accepting okay. and overall this hierarchy is said to be Chomsky hierarchy. You will be properly looking into this particular topic in unit number 3. But as of now, I am just trying to look into bar uh, even and again I am trying to say you regular languages, but you need to understand how this particular concept comes. Okay. This language is the one which is just giving the set of rules for a particular uh, user defined you can say set of strings. Okay. So, therefore, this regular language and closure properties over this regular languages are defined as certain operations on these regular languages which are guaranteed to produce regular language that means whatever operations are being performed over these regular languages I am 100 percent sure that the result that will come will also be a regular language in that sense we can say that that particular operation is closed under this regular languages I hope it is clear to you the definition and I have tried to explain to you the hierarchy of this particular machine along with the language along with the grammar okay. So, let us go with the next slide next slide starts with the properties the first property is clean closure if you remember the expression wise okay I have not given you the exact one but yes I have somewhere the other I have mentioned the topic known as clean closure which you will be learning properly in the next unit that is known as your regular expression. But let me let you know what is the clean closure symbolic representation it is asterisk asterisk generally 
have a range of value from 0, 1, 2, 3 up till infinity. Clear? And we are having one more closure that is known as your positive closure which is represented by plus and it starts from 1, 2, 3 dot 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 up till infinity. I hope these two difference you should know what is the range of values that is taken by positive closure and what is the range of values taken by clean closure. Okay? So, this is one kind of operator only, this is one kind of operator only. So, how do we justify that this operator and this operator are closed under the same language which is known as a regular language? We can take any possible way of explaining this. So, the better way of explaining this will be useful once you understand the concept of regular expression which you will be learning in unit number 2. So, once you are un once you are you have understood the concept of regular expression it will be easy for you to prove that these two operators are closed under regular languages okay? or you can say the regular languages are closed under clean closure and positive closure. Let me take an example I hope this is clear to you all I have taken two example L1 is equals to A union B A union B. Okay. Now, if I take clean closure of it, definitely what it will do? It will keep on, it, it will keep on increasing the length and some way the other you will be getting all, all sequence of alphabets comprising of L1 and definitely we can say that L1 to the power clean closure will give you the same result to some way the other you will be getting what? A regular language only. So, therefore, for every possible regular language for every possible operator like clean closure and positive closure it will always be regular language result. Okay? In a broader sense we will try to explain we will try to discuss once this regular expression concept will be done that is why I am telling you we are discussing as of now the points which is related to closure properties and decision properties but we will try to relate together with the concept of regular language and regular expression after learning unit number 2 points clear but still as of now i am i'm i'm feeling that for as of now you have understood that for this particular operator over any language if you do then definitely you will be getting the same language again and again okay and as i have already mentioned you that in in these two operators only a small difference is there that is zero is not present over here so, definitely it will not hamper the language operation. The language that you will be getting after doing this operation will be the same. Okay? So, let us go with the next, uh, next concept positive closure I have told you. Now, comes back to complement. Okay. If we talk about complement this particular concept I have done while discussing the design process of DFA or while discussing the design process of NFA if you remember. Okay. Now, let me check I will not go with this example as of now I will just try to relate what we have studied as of now. If I say a language sorry a language having length equals to even. Now, my dear students this will comprises of what? length 0, length 2, length 4, length 6, length 8 and so on. This is suppose language L. Now, if I say, if I say that what is the complement part of it? Complement part of it will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. I think you know the complement, right? In the case of set, if A is a set of elements, if I have to find out the complement of A, what I do? U that is universal minus the set, you will be getting the complement of A. The same way, if I take the complement of this particular set which is nothing but the length equals to even, I will get a language of this particular pine or particular uh, type which is nothing but what? Length equals to odd. So, that means, this language is having is complement which is nothing but length equals to odd which is also a regular language therefore, we can say that this regular language is closed under the complement operation. I hope it is clear to you all. Re later on you can relate with this example I have taken LG and I have taken L, uh, LG of uh, this one. See you can take it see A to the power n I have taken and n is greater than equal greater than 3. So, if I say greater than 3 then definitely it will take from 
a to the power 4 correct a to the power 4 and keep on increasing till infinity okay and it is a regular language and if i take l complement of g then definitely less than equals to 3 it will take so a to the power 0 to a to the power 3 so that is also a regular language so if we take the operation complement for both the languages we are getting the same one so we can say that this particular operator is closed under okay next comes union so union is also same that if you take a, lang a language which is already a regular and another language which is already regular and if you merge or if you do the union operation definitely you will be getting a regular language only. So, that is why we can say that the regular language is closed under union. You can take the example, okay, I can, you can relate with it. If it is says a to the power n, n greater than 0 which is a regular language and I am taking b to the power n, n greater than equals to 0, then if we take a to the power n union of b to the power n together we will get a regular only. Okay. We are not m trying to merge one after another a to the power n finish then b to the power n. Okay. Next comes intersection, intersection also concepts uh, uh, the, the, the concept is somewhat similar to what we have understood till union and inter concatenation uh, complement because in the case of intersection if we take a language which is regular and also a language which is already a regular and try to find out the similarities between them definitely the language which we will be getting if we put in logic it will be also regular. So, therefore, regular language is closed under intersection. It is mentioned over here two examples L1, L2 and L3 is nothing but L1 union, L1 intersection L2. L1 is having A to the power m, B to the power n, L2 is having A to the power, you need to find out commonalities. If you are not having commonalities between both the languages, you are not able to find out the operation. But suppose you are having commonalities between both the operation or both the languages, definitely intersection will exist and definitely we can say that these two languages are closed under intersection. Okay. So, next comes, next uh, slide comes is concatenation. Okay. So, if we take concatenation in a, in a broader way, now concatenation uh, can be done in a way that suppose L1 is a regular and L2 is a regular. See, here we cannot consider that L1 is a regular and L2 is a context free uh, language, then we cannot do it. It should be of the same genre, it should be of the same domain. So, as we say that L1 is a regular and L2 is a regular, if we try to concatenate these two, definitely it will be a regular. Now, let us take an example here say a to the power m. Okay. See, I will, I will let you know in the upcoming lecture where we will be learning about the regular language concept, how to identify a language is a regular or not. Okay. Right now, you might be having a doubt that whether a language is regular or not, how to find it. So, that we will be discussing in the end of uh, our like sessions, okay. end of our lecture videos. Now, as of now, I am saying that this a to the power m is a regular language and a b to the power n which is of having different count is also a regular language. If we concatenate these two, definitely it will be a regular language. And how do we justify that this is a regular language that you will be able to understand once we will reach the topic which is known as how to identify that a language is regular or not. Now, as of now, you just try to understand that what are the topics on behalf of which we can say that this is closed. Okay? These are the different properties that we have understood till now, closure properties. I hope the basics and basics we have seen, positive, clean closure, then union, intersection, complement and concatenation. Okay? So, six operations we have seen as I have told you, homomorphism, inverse homomorphism and one more topic we will be looking at the end. Okay? Now, come to the next property which is known as decision property. This is also an important point of view if we look into some of the parameters. See. These are nothing but properties also you can say parameters also. Now, if I take a language which is regular, I have taken a language which is regular. Now, if I say a regular language, okay, that means is this language is having some sort of sub suppose elements in it, some sort of elements in it or we can say some sort of strings in it. If suppose the language does not have any string, then we can represent by this one. That means nothing is there, or we write simply write like this. Okay. That means what? Uh, we do not write in the set form. Okay. Simply phi means null and epsilon means a single down element which is having no string attached to it. That means if we say nothing, no string is attached to this particular language, then that property is said to be what? Emptiness. Okay. If some of the other strings are present, then this particular uh, property is said to be non-emptiness. It is very, very simple topics. Okay. 
Next comes finiteness. Now, suppose I say length of a language is equals to 2. I think this is the first concept that we have seen. That means, what are the elements? Suppose A, 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 B, B, A, B, B. Okay? And this I have taken over A and B. That means, I have taken input alphabets A and B and I have tried to find out the length is equals to 2. Then I got a language like this, which is what? A finite. So, this is the property finiteness. If I say length at least 2, then that means 2 will be the minimum length. Apart from that, it will keep on going until it reaches infinity. Okay? Cannot reach infinity means it's, it will be infinity. So, that means that, that that particular property of that language is said to be infinite, infiniteness. Okay? Next, membership. If I say suppose A A belongs to this language or not, yes it belongs to the language. That means what? I am trying to check whether this particular string is a member of this language or not. So, that kind of property is said to be membership. And equality. Equality means if I am trying to uh, compare two different languages okay, and trying to find out the equivalence between those two languages, then it is said to be the property as equal equality. Therefore, six uh, properties are there. One is your emptiness, next one is your non-emptiness, third one is your finiteness, infiniteness, membership and equality. I hope this particular properties are clear to you all and these properties generally assemble and says as decision properties. Okay? Now, let us go back to the last topic of our today's session that is your equivalence of DFA. In order to find out two finite automata whether they are equivalent to each other or not, we just need to focus one important particular parameter. I will let you know what that parameter is all about. First of all, conditions is that two finite automata over any input alphabet are said to be equivalent if they accept the same set of strings. This is the first condition which is logically till now you have understood I think so. Okay. If two languages are if two automata or two languages I am talking about over any input alphabet are said to be equivalent when they will accept the same set of strings. Clear? The first condition I think it is clear to you all. Next condition says that when two finite automata are not equivalent, then there is some string over this particular uh, alphabet satisfying the following condition that is one automaton reaches a final state and the other, other automaton reaches a non-final state. That means, suppose this is F A 1 and this is F A 2 and F A 1 reaches final state and F A 2 reaches non-final state. In that scenario, we will say that those two automata are not equivalent. So, this is the second condition that you need to follow. So, let us check an example and we will discuss properly. The question is given to you, two finite automata are given figure A and figure B. Okay? And, we need to cons and we need to understand that these two finite automata are equivalent to each other or not. See, how to do that? First, I, I got these two uh, diagrams with you. I do got these two particular transition diagram. I will try to take a comparison table for it like this. Comparison table says, I am having q and q slash. Okay? Q and q slash. What is this meaning? q comprises of all the states of figure number A, q dash comprises of all the states of figure number B. Clear? And q c means what? q means the first figure states on seeing input alphabet C because here we are having two input alphabets which is nothing but C and D, which is nothing but C and D. Therefore, we will try to find a comparison table where I will put down these states into pairs for from both the figures. Clear? Now, let us discuss this q and q dash. So, first state will be what? q1. Now, we will start off with the initial state. Here initial state for figure A is q1 and here q4. So, let me check it out here. This one will be q1 and q4. Now, let me take, now you, you can just uh, look into the diagram. Q1 on sing C, Q1 on sing C, where it is going? It is going to itself. So, therefore, it will be Q1. Then Q4 on sing C, it is going to itself, correct? So, that means it will be Q4. Now, we have to check that whether it is a non-final final. Whenever you find any kind of pair which is final, non-final or non-final final, then you have to stop 
and you have to declare that these two automatas are not equivalent to each other as I have already mentioned in the point number condition number 2 final and non final or non final final. You have to continue this comparison when you reach final final non final non final got it. So, if you find any kind of pair which is final final non final non final then continue this process. Next q 1 on sing c d q 1 on sing d it is going to q 2 ok and q 4 q 4 on sing d it is going to q 5 ok. So, this is what now look at this q 1 and q 4 q 1 and q 4 are both final final. So, final final means nothing to do though you can continue with the process q 2 and q 5 q 2 and q 5 both are non final non final continue the process. So, like this you have to continue the process next step next state will be what next state will be q 1 and q 4 is done now I can continue with what I can continue with the new states now how do we find out the new comparison states it is very simple when we are checking for q 1 and q 4 try to find out any new pair came or not yes a new pair came right. So, bring it down as we do in NFA to DFA conversion q 2 and q 5. So, if you look into q 2 and q 5 q 2 on sing c where it is going it is going to q 3 and q 5 on sing c it is going to q 6. So, q 3 q 6 will be the new pair and q 3 q 6 are both non final non final. So, you can move forward. So, q 2 q 5 on sing d q 2 q 5 on sing d q 2 on sing d where it is going it is going to q 1 and q 5 on sing d it is going to q 4. So, it will be q 1 q 4 q 1 q 4 already been scanned correct. So, I am got a new state that is q 3 q 6 bring it over here q 3 q 6. So, q 3 q 6 what I have to do q 3 q 6 q 3 on sing d c q 2 and q 6 on sing c q 7. So, q 2 q 7 you got it and q 2 q 7 is a new state and both are non final non final I can move forward then I am checking q 3 q 6 q 3 q 6 on q 3 on sing d it is coming back to itself q 6 on sing d it is coming back to itself. So, it will be q 3 q 6 now if you look into this one new state came is q 2 q 7. So, bring it over here q 2 q 7. So, q 2 q 7 on sing d on sing c q 2 on sing c it is going to q 3 q 7 on sing c it is going to q 6. So, q 3 q 6 is the new one. Oh, is it is a new one? No, it is not a new one. We have already scanned Q3, Q6. Correct. Now Q2, Q7 on sing D, Q2 on sing D, where it is going? Q1, Q7 on sing D, where it is going? Q4. So it is nothing but Q1, Q4. Q1, Q4 is already been scanned. Correct. So is there any new state? No new state. Okay. And we are done with the process. And I can say that the figure A, sorry, figure A and figure B are equivalent to each other. So, I hope it is clear to everyone that how to find out the equivalence process and how to find out this table. Okay? If you find anywhere final, non-final or non-final, final then you need to stop there and you need to declare that both the finite automatas are not equivalent and if you are finding final final non final non final continue the process and this process should be done until all the new states or new pair of states has been scanned ok. So, this is all about today's session in this video and here we have tried to understand the concept of closure properties and decision properties of regular languages uh, sorry finite automata regular language part we will be discussing soon. And we have seen equivalence property or how to find the equivalent between two finite automators. So, thank you for watching the video. In the next video, we will come with one more interesting topic. Thank you.